In this example, we're going to go ahead and calculate the energy associated with a wave of light whose frequency is given. The frequency with this particular wave of light is given as 20 megahertz, and that's what's going to be useful for us in determining the energy associated with it. However, as is the case with any situation where you need to find the energy associated with a wave of light or a photon of light, you're going to use E equals HC over lambda. The issue that we run into this time around is that we don't have the wavelength. Instead, what we do have is the frequency. So the frequency is actually given to us, but not the wavelength. But that's not a problem because we can actually find the wavelength from the frequency using the equation that relates wavelength to frequency, which is lambda equals c over f. In this equation, c is again the speed of light, and that's a constant whose value is given to us right here. So this is useful. Now the frequency we're also given in this example at 20 megahertz. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just plug in those numbers to find the wavelength. So lambda equals 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by 20 megahertz. Now, one thing to note is that a megahertz is the unit that's often associated with frequency. Now, megahertz automatically tells us that we're dealing with the metric system. So mega means 10 to the power of 6. So what we're technically looking at over here is lambda equals 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second divided by 20 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. But 1 hertz is also the same thing as 1 per second. Since remember, when we're talking about frequency, we're talking about how often something happens, and it's generally represented as the number of times a thing happens in a given time interval. So it's just per second. So we end up going ahead and replacing hertz down in the denominator here with that unit of per seconds. So now notice that we have per seconds in the numerator per seconds in the denominator, so those two things will cancel each other out, leaving behind only the units of meters, which are perfect because wavelength should generally have units of distance since it is the distance between the two crests of a wave. So now let's go ahead and figure out what is the wavelength associated with this particular wave. So lambda equals 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters. Now we're just dividing by 20 times 10 to the power of 6. So when we actually divide 3 times 10 to the power of 8 by 20 times 10 to the power of 6, we get 15 meters. So 15 meters is actually what we're going to use as lambda when we're dealing with E equals HC over lambda. So now we're going to go back in and say, okay, well we have an equation E equals HC over lambda, and that's going to give us the energy associated with this particular wave. So the wavelength here is 15 meters, and the value for HC, using the shortcut we got from previous, is 1240 EV nanometers. So this is something we can automatically plug in and divide by 15 meters. But now here's the issue we run into. Now we have nanometers at the top of the fraction and meters in the bottom of the fraction. So one way we can go ahead and figure this out is by changing nanometers into meters or meters into nanometers, but we have to convert one or the other into the other unit so that they can cancel out. Otherwise, we're stuck with some sort of an order of magnitude issue, and that's not going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the nanometer that's in the top of the fraction into its equivalent in meters. So I can literally just swap it out for what it is in meters. So when I do that, I'll go ahead and write that in green so it's easier to see. 1 nanometer was 10 to the power of negative 9 meters. So this is still getting multiplied. So now I have meters at top and meters at the bottom, so they can cancel out. So now I'm dealing with 1240 times 10 to the power of negative 9 from the conversion we just did. Electron volts divided by 15. So when I divide 1240 times 10 to the power of negative 9 by 15, I get an energy of 8.2666 so many sixes times 10 to the power of negative 8 electron volts. Now I can leave my answer as is as long as I 
rounded off to the correct number of significant figures, or I can switch it over to units of joules, but regardless of whether I'm using electron volts or joules, as long as I've chosen a unit that's used for energy, then it should be good enough. So let's stick with electron volts for right now and determine how many significant figures do I need since I don't want to be converting. I just want to keep it as is, but I need to round it off. So I go back to the original problem and in my original problem, I have a frequency that's given to me with 20 megahertz and the number 20 only has one significant figure in it. So when I go back down to my final answer, I have to cut off my number immediately after the first digit. So looking at the number that follows immediately after my cutoff point, that too will determine whether I'm rounding the eight up or leaving it as is. But because it's a number that's smaller than five, I can just go ahead and say that the energy associated with that particular wavelength is eight times 10 to the power of negative eight electron volts.